The next aspect of uh, Victorian leisure and pleasure would be uh, private and family pastimes. So uh, what the Victorians did at home in the evening. They didn't have electricity, they didn't have uh, television or radio. Um, so what did they do? Uh, and uh, basically, uh, how did they occupy the free time, especially the richer sections of the society, those who had free time, who could, uh, who could afford it. So um, there are some uh, things that uh, gained popularity in the 19th century and uh, um, some uh, that are not so longer popular today because of the advent of electricity and all those uh, mechanized forms of entertainment that started to appear in the 20th century but um, in the 19th century uh, so um, what would they do uh, a very popular form of um, occupying time was reading of course uh, and there were different kinds of reading uh, some of you uh, probably are aware that uh, the uh, big part, perhaps the majority of Victorian uh, novels, first appeared in serialized form. So they were uh, printed in installments uh, every two weeks or every month or every week. It really depends. But uh, they were basically the early equivalent of the uh, TV series. Uh, before the television, before the Netflix, before everything, uh, people actually read books in installments. It was quite popular to read books in, uh, uh, in groups, uh, within the family circle or within a friendly circle. Uh, they would get hold of the newest installment of a popular book and they would read that uh, together. So one person would read, the other ones uh, would uh, listen. This would limit the necessity for the amount of light. So you could just uh, have the entire family entertained by one lamp. So the lamp for the reader and the rest would just sit in the half darkness and listen. Uh, and then very often, uh, just as uh, we do with, uh, with all kinds of serialized stories now, they would discuss like what will happen next, what will um, uh, happen to the characters. Sometimes, uh, of course, the uh, the writers would take advantage of it and, and finish the installments with cliffhangers. So basically all those techniques that are now used in, in, in television or uh, online entertainment, they were known by the Victorians, but they were used in the uh, medium of uh, printed works. So um, the, uh, the novels, and if the novel was popular, uh, later on it could, be, uh, it could be published in a volume form. So, but Basically, uh, the majority of them started as those uh, those serials. Uh, then uh, we have uh, the the press and the magazines, and uh, uh, the nineteenth century is a great uh, moment of specialization of uh, of the printed media. So you have uh, magazines for everybody, uh, for every interest, for every hobby, for every age group, for every um, even uh, income group. So you have very cheap uh, um, uh, press uh, for, the, for the working class because of course uh, the literacy is growing. From the 1870s you have uh, compulsory schooling for children so the, the levels of literacy are really gr growing. So you have uh, all kinds of uh, popular reading materials, the, uh, the newspapers, the magazines for children and for teenagers and uh, of course different for boys and for girls and even for some uh, some uh, uh, professional groups such as um, uh, house uh, servants there were special magazines for for young girls uh, working as house servants in the city usually they would begin moralizing um, entertainment this is quite typical for victorian culture uh, in general they try to uh, combine entertainment with education and, and this kind of moral education as well uh, so you have um, magazines for all kinds of professions and all kinds of hobbies so um, people interested in uh, in um, sports and country life and uh, fashion uh, there are lots of magazines uh, made especially for women 
a very popular one was uh, the English Woman's Domestic Magazine, uh, edited by uh, Mr. and Mrs. Beaton. Uh, Mrs. Beaton, Isabella Beaton, would go on to write a very successful book of household management, uh, the book of advice for housewives, mostly middle class housewives on how to manage the household, how to employ the servants, how to um, to uh, cook food and uh, give parties and uh, care for their children and for the ill. So basically all kinds of like a home Bible for the, uh, for the um, Victorian middle class uh, women. Uh, it's still a very popular book, um, Mrs. Beaton's uh, Book of Household Management. I have a copy, um, not a 19th century copy, but a modern copy of this book. Uh, I think uh, it used to be very popular as a wedding present for women. So, uh, so uh, this is something that kind of survived the Victorian uh, Victorian. Um, uh, culture. Uh, many of those magazines uh, had uh, elements of uh, um, entertainment or kind of leisure activities, sometimes for the entire uh, family, such as parlor games, so crosswords and word puzzles and such things, so uh, something to keep uh, people occupied uh, in, the, uh, in the evening. Uh, so all kinds of printed materials, that's one thing. Uh, another uh, popular um, way to occupy the time was hobbies. Hobbies and crafts. Uh, I think I mentioned uh, the uh, ladylike accomplishments uh, last week. So the hobbies that were especially recommended for uh, respectable women. Something that the teenagers would be taught uh, at uh, schools for girls, so uh, mostly um, needlework and uh, other similar handicrafts that would keep them occupied uh, when they are married and they are mistresses of their own uh, houses. So uh, this was very popular, any kind of needlework, embroidery, lace making, um, decorative crafts uh, using paper, sometimes wood, sometimes other materials. Uh, that was uh, really something very popular. Uh, it could uh, just keep their hands occupied. Uh, if they were skilled, uh, this uh, wouldn't even require a lot of light in the evening, things like knitting or crocheting. Uh, the the um, products uh, could be used as presents to give to the family or they could be um, collected by charities. This was quite a popular thing and sold in charity bazaars. So. Uh, some charitable organizations uh, would uh, sell these uh, little decorative objects um, and the money would be used for, um, I don't know, helping the poor or orphans or anything. So uh, this was something very popular. Uh, for men and women, for men mostly the kind of decorative crafts involving uh, wood rather than needlework. Uh, but for women, uh, needlework was something very, very popular. Uh, it was very fashionable in Victorian society for a pregnant uh, lady to, uh, to prepare uh, the, uh, the first clothes for the baby. Uh, and um, this was something quite popular. Also, uh, during the times of uh, wars, such as the Crimean War, many ladies involved in knitting socks and hats for the soldiers and the, and the veterans wounded in the war. So this was uh, sometimes used for um, charitable purposes. Another uh, Victorian passion uh, or hobby which was very popular was collecting things. Victorians absolutely adored collecting things. This was um, a popular hobby for men and women. Uh, very often, especially for men, it included some educational or even scientific elements. So uh, they would collect uh, uh, something connected with natural sciences, such as shells or uh, 
fossils, fossils were especially popular, or uh, they would catch insects and preserve them and then put them in collections, uh, so beetles and butterflies and uh, uh, of course if they could uh, if they could afford um, to have exotic specimen, uh, they would be very happy, but even domestic um, butterflies or ferns or plants or something, anything that could be collected was collected. Um, this has been interpreted as something answering a very deep psychological need in many Victorians for ordering the world around them. Uh, if you look at the social uh, structure of, uh, of the Victorian world, it was quite um, fluid, with the middle class uh, relatively new and uh, finding their place in the world and uh, uh, basically uh, people sometimes feeling insecure in the, uh, in the world around them with the religious dogmas questioned, with the social structure and the flux. Many uh, Victorians reacted to this by trying to find some order in nature or in their lives and uh, collecting things and cataloging the collections was uh, perhaps the, the kind of answer to, uh, to this psychological need. Uh, so uh, that's what you have in, uh, in uh, our Victorian society. Uh, anything could be collected. Um, photographs. When, photo when photography started to be a fashionable uh, new thing, uh, people collected photographs. Um, then they started to, to make photographs, but they could collect uh, autographs of famous people. They could collect uh, um, any kind of, um, I don't know, postcards or, or um, matchbox uh, uh, decorations, anything, just anything. Of course, uh, the most uh, educated and kind of intellectual um, Victorians would collect, uh, would collect something connected with, with science, something that they could learn from. Uh, another thing, perhaps connected with collections, uh, was um, animals. Sometimes they could be collected, so you could collect exotic uh, fish or exotic uh, plants or any kind of living things that were exotic. Birds were very popular in the in Victorian uh, world. Uh, but generally, uh, this is the moment when the middle class, en masse, start having pets, start having animals just for pleasure and companionship. Uh, this is something that starts in the 18th century, but uh, is uh, mostly um, limited to the very rich sections of the society, uh, those who can afford to have extra animals just for pleasure. Uh, but uh, with the growing urbanization of the society, with most people living in the cities towards the end of the 19th century, people just want to have some access to living things, to, to, na to nature in the city. So they start having uh, animals for pleasure. Uh, an important um, aspect here is that Queen Victoria loved animals. She especially loved dogs. Uh, she supported many charitable organizations, uh, helping animals and uh, um, trying to prevent cruelty towards animals and uh, uh, the images, also photographic images of the Queen and her dogs were very popular so many people in the, in the middle class wanted to keep pets themselves. So rather than working dogs and working cats, you also have companion animals. This is something that uh, is very modern, it's very connected with urban lifestyle. Uh, the last thing probably uh, to mention, of course if you want more, uh, I uh, recommend reading the entire chapter uh, by, uh, by Sally Mitchell, is uh, the pastimes uh, connected with, uh, uh, with children and um, uh, young people, a very popular uh, form of entertainment was music, so children and teenagers uh, from uh, um, middle class uh, were uh, routinely taught music. Music and singing and dancing 
was not yet mechanically reproduced. The first gramophones are really the invention of the very late 19th century. Um, but uh, of course, people being people, uh, everybody loved music and singing and dancing, so they had to produce it themselves. So very often um, you would have, um, especially young people, the daughters of the family, being trained to make music to entertain the guests, to entertain the family members. Uh, there are different uh, um, fashionable instruments, of course, uh, uh, the technological progress is important here. So, for example, the invention of the uh, upright piano, the small piano, not the big instrument that would only fit in large houses, but a small um, upright piano that could be uh, very easily fitted into any kind of middle class parlor. Uh, so uh, this uh, really um, reacted in the great popularity of, of uh, piano uh, music and uh, teaching um, young people to play the piano. Um, also, the, there were different fashions, it's about sports basically. You would have the fashion for the violin, especially among the, the country people, the violin was also always quite popular, but uh, for a time uh, it would be also popular among the middle class. There was a fashion for accordion, there was a fashion for the harp, uh, so you might have um, respectable people learning uh, different uh, instruments. Um, Playing music together and singing together was a very important part of socializing and also a very important part of kind of social flirtation, uh, especially playing the piano um, together with somebody with four hands uh, or uh, singing to somebody's accompaniment was a very important part of flirtation and courtship in uh, in Victorian um, in Victorian uh, period I mentioned the commercialization of toys and children's play uh, absolutely this is a big feature of Victorian culture so um, we have uh, all kinds of toys many of the modern toys uh, uh, are um, developed uh, in the 19th century so uh, hand puppets and different kinds of dolls, even fashion dolls, not the Barbie of course, but kind of fashion dolls uh, and uh, um, wooden uh, or tin soldiers and mechanical toys and board games and uh, uh, s fluffy soft toys, not yet the teddy bear, the teddy bear is the, um, the invention of the early 20th century, but other soft uh, toys, soft uh, um, dolls uh, uh, were quite uh, popular. Um, wooden uh, toys, uh, including a very popular uh, Victorian toy being the Noah's Ark set, so kind of big um, box in the shape of a boat with little wooden animals inside so you could play uh, with that. Um, uh, rocking horses, hobby horses, so uh, the, uh, the kind of uh, horse head on a stick that uh, a child could play with, uh, toy castles uh, and uh, uh, all kinds of uh, um, patriotic toys uh, connected with uh, knights and soldiers and, uh, and such, uh, swords and such, uh, such things. Uh, of course, um, toys were a very important part of socialization, so especially for girls, they would include elements of teaching good table manners, so little china doll uh, tea sets, so they would get the fashion dolls and they would drink tea and uh, uh, learn uh, good manners at the table and uh, little um, and uh, metal kitchenware or such, uh, such things were also quite popular too teach the, uh, the girls uh, to um, conform with Victorian gender roles, basically. So that's what you have. And uh, uh, of course, if you remember that there were many more children in Victorian families on average than, than today, uh, you have a lot of games, you have a lot of play, uh, play acting and storytelling and uh, uh, secret adventures and especially uh, during holidays or, um, or celebrations when you have uh, 
distant family um, visiting each other and bringing those children and they do. so playing with cousins playing with large groups of children uh, would be also quite um, quite popular so we have nursery rhymes and all kinds of uh, of um, uh, games uh, that are traditionally connected with uh, with uh, childhood let's say so traditional childhood is basically late victorian and edwardian so uh that's it for this week and next week we'll basically round up the entire semester and we'll talk about the edwardian period so the first years of the 20th century uh and uh, we'll see uh, what survived of the uh, victorian world uh, uh, what were the areas of continuity and uh, the areas of change so uh, thank you for this week and see you next week